something. Um, and now it's time for the Ramble Rod Show. Hi, buddy. Come on in and welcome again to the Ramble Rod Show. Creepers. What's up, you crazy creeps? It is Clearski. I am back. I got my Krusty the Clown t-shirt on today. Got the, uh, you know, appropriate attire on, if you will, for the vlog. Today's vlog is definitely going to be super fun. This is really cool. And the more I kind of went down the, you know, little rabbit hole of history and knowledge, the more I was like, man, this is so cool. So a lot of you guys are probably familiar with Krusty the Clown, the clown from The Simpsons, who is a children's television host on the show, one of Bart's idols. Um, Krusty Matt Groening, being from Portland, resembled a lot of his characters from the show around people um, that he grew up with, went to school with, and things like that. There was a clown in Portland um, for many years, Rusty Nails, that's right, James Allen. Um, he actually did a cameo on one of the episodes. And um, anyways, Matt said that Rusty Nails, Krusty the Clown, Krusty Rusty kind of always just stuck with him. He resembled the name uh, mostly after Rusty. Rusty was really a good guy, kind of nothing like how they portray, you know, Krusty on the show is kind of a... <laughs> Yeah, he's good to the he's good to Bart, but I don't think he really likes kids and things and he's just kind of so far out there But basically Matt's inspiration for that was you know growing up watching children's um, TV show hosts that would you know have their shows on television um, Every town kind of had their own version um, but out here was rusty nails and also Even before rusty there was a gentleman by the name of heck Harper that had a television show for kids on KPTV 12 here in Portland, Oregon. And uh, years later would be followed up by another band that we uh, we actually visited his grave not too long ago, Mr. Addie Bobkins. So they those guys kind of paved the path for, um, you know, children's cartoon hosts over the years. And Matt Groening, you know, obviously from Portland, found that to be pretty inspirational and you know kind of use Portland already um, in the Simpsons but today we are going to talk about another very uh, well definitely in Portland famous iconic person unfortunately he passed away um, and is no longer with us but his memory will definitely still stay alive especially talking about him and doing vlogs like this that's you know my 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 vision and my fr my foremost importance behind these vlogs is to you know just remember and pay respect and homage but the gentleman i'm talking to you guys about and most of you from portland will probably remember him automatically and you're probably like clearski why the heck haven't you said his name yet mr ramblin rod that's right mr carl anders mr ramblin rod the king of in my opinion just because it was my era too in the 80s um the king of tv uh, you know kids television show host he was so fun um, in fact I watched him every single morning growing up I lived in southeast Portland right off of Herald Street and in the morning me and my brother as we were you know getting ready for the day for school we would have the little tiny television on that only got you know maybe four or five channels at the time um, to Fox KPTV every morning the Ramblin Rod show he would show up his little sailboat would cruise in um, the man had a ton of buttons. That was his kind of iconic attire. He wore a vest on the show, and throughout the years, kids would bring him buttons. And he put one on one day and decided, heck it, you may as well go full on. So he was known to have the, the really cool jacket with all the buttons. Thank you, Spence. And this is Jordan. Jordan? Okay, Jordan. Thank you very much. 
And years later, they said they found like over, I think it was like 300,000 buttons that he had kept every single one of them that he ever gotten, which uh, when I heard that, I was like, man, that is so cool. Uh, but like I said, yeah, definitely one of my favorite television hosts. Um, like I said, just being a kid and growing up in that time also helped. Um, also, at the time, the pizza place Chuck E. Cheese was um, really huge. I mean, it was, you know, one of the one of the places, iconic places, still to this day. It actually, unfortunately, just closed uh, here, the last location in Portland, a couple years back. Uh, but Ramblin' Rod would do a birthday segment on the show where he would have all the kids that, you know, it was their birthday where they would line up and he would go through with the microphone and basically interview each one of them. And um, Chuck E. Cheese would have the characters, Chuck E. Munch, um, gosh, I can't think of the, all their names at the moment, but he would have them come out and do a little dance kind of performance and sing to the kids. And back then it was like, oh my gosh, you got Chuck E. Cheese in the house? Like, so they, you know, the sponsorship between him and Chuck E. Cheese at the time was huge. And um, I'll never forget that. And I'll do my best to try and insert some, some footage or maybe some photos if I can find some um, somewhere here. Every, every morning, um, you know, Ramblin' Rod would come out, he would play some cartoons, and then in between each, you know, little cartoon segment, which he played the best cartoons, by the way. He had like Popeye and all the Looney Tunes, uh, Tom and Jerry, um, all the classics. Uh, but he would, in between showing the cartoons, kind of like how Krusty does with the itchy and scratchy and stuff, he would um, interview each kid. He would basically go through um, and if you guys remember, he'd be like, excuse me, pardon me, excuse me, pardon me, excuse me. As he was working his way down, you know, each kid he would interview, where, you know, what's your name and where are you from? And you from? I'm in Portland, Oregon. I'm in Crescent, Oregon. Crescent, Oregon. Crescent's getting pretty close to Portland nowadays. Portland keeps spreading out pretty soon. There you are, you know. This is from Crescent, Oregon. Crescent, Oregon. Crescent, Oregon. Jessica Jackson, uh -huh. and Sure. We'll figure it out in a little bit here. And in the front row, this guy is Daniel. He was such a good guy, and a lot of the kids would freeze and just wouldn't know what to say. And um, you know, it, he would help them out. So he would have like a list of the kids and their names and where they were from. And sometimes the brothers or the sisters of each kid would kind of whisper in their ear, like, "Okay, we're from Gresham or we're from Portland, and this is, you know, how old are you?" And he was just so good with the kids. In fact, I think he had like. I think he had like five or six children of his own um, who one of them is an average av uh, avid pilot and I think he gives tours of the Oregon coast in like an old timey uh, replica plane I knew I, I'm almost positive 
rambling rod too that was one of his favorite kind of like things to do outside of being with his family or maybe even with his family but i think he was an uh, a pilot as well um, and owned some planes um, i could be mistaken so i sorry if i am but i thought i maybe have read that somewhere but like i said unfortunately he did pass away so all we have left is his memories um, at one point here in portland there was a candy shop um, that had a shrine that kind of paid respects to Rod. They had like a cardboard cut out of them. And KPTV 12 here in Fox, I believe they still have some of the um, original props. And I think they even have a, a microphone that was used by Ramblin' Rod on numerous occasions, kind of on display there. So hopefully we can get in there sometime and document that as well. But definitely a true Portland icon. And like I said, he was just so good with all the kids. And, you know, that must have been rough having basically like a live uh, studio audience, you know, in the mornings and having to show up. I think they wanted you to be there at like four or five in the morning so they could film and, you know, get everything up and running by, a time, by the time it was ready to go. But, you know, imagine a studio just full of kids that early in the morning. He's got to have a lot of patience and just, you know, he's had to have loved doing that because obviously, you know, it was probably fun for him too to just, you know, have that have that goodness and everything about him and then see the kids' smiles and everything. In fact, he even did like a smile contest where the camera would basically pan through the entire audience. I personally was never on the show. My best friend Brian went. I was supposed to go that morning, but I think I was, I think I was too scared to go or I don't know what happened exactly, but I just declined to go. And I think he actually ended up winning the smile award at one point too. Uh, but the camera would basically pan through the whole uh, audience and each kid would smile and then as they would come back from the break or in between the cartoons, Rod would announce the winner and stuff. And Alright, we're going to check out the smiles again and we're going to have Uncle Larry Neat pick the smiles for us. That's our official smile picker right over there, Uncle Larry Neat. And Uncle Chuck Heil here in camera number two, the Wilson camera is going to take the picture. We're starting with... Uh, Nookie Brooke Harris. Nookie Brooke Harris, look right over there. Camera number two with a great big smile right there. That's it. All right. Everybody smile. Watch that little bitty spider. All kinds of cool prizes. I think there was even coupons to get into Chuck E. Cheese and you know everything a kid would want back then. He basically came through and and made it happen. So the reason why I wanted to tell you guys this too and talk a little bit about him is like I said to pay our respects and homage. But I actually found the location to where Ramblin' Rod passed, and I thought just for you know just kind of good measure and documenting it we're going to go up here just a ways it's not too far from our walk today to just kind of go up thanks guys morning. just kind of go up morning and pay our respects to ramblin rod one of the greatest in my opinion kids television hosts to ever do it he um spent a lot of his time after the show um basically like you know just giving back his time and stuff and he volunteered a lot and different uh, charities and did a lot of donations and things to you know kind of help other businesses and one of those businesses was actually volunteers of america rod showed up um, that morning to sign autographs and just kind of you know give his presence a lot of people in portland loved him so he basically would use just you know himself um, to help 
help everybody. So, you know, donating his time and signing autographs and stuff like that to, you know, better a, a place that helps other people's, uh, you know, not so good, um, you know, I think that's a great thing. So he continued to do, you know, community work and, and love for Portland even after he retired from the show. Oaks Park had his retirement party. Gosh, I think it was 1996 or 1997 and he showed up wearing the jacket with all the buttons and um, they gave a speech and he's just funnier and heck, you know, somebody was giving a, a, a speech on Rod and talking all about him and saying all these things he did and it was time for Rod to kind of to kind of chime in and the first thing he said was where are you getting that script you know so he was just really um all around great guy and uh we're gonna go up and see actually one of his well his final place he where he passed so see you guys up in here in a second all right you guys so we are here we are on 181st in division in southeast portland and we are walking up to this little strip mall here right in front of us you can see there is a sign up top there it has been flipped back on may 11th of 2002 this is where ramblin rod would have taken his final breath right inside the doors of that building um, the sign has been flipped but back then on may 11th of 2002 the, the signage would have read volunteers of america um, but it is no longer a Volunteers of America. It's an empty building at this point. But Rod showed up that morning to basically give his persona to help the Volunteers of America. He was here with his iconic jacket on with all the buttons and was ready to sign autographs for the day. And he basically entered this building, which is now vacant, um, like I said, which was at the time the Volunteers of America and he basically was donating his time to help others um, less fortunate. Um, he was here to give autographs and take pictures with people of Portland that loved him um, but unfortunately he suffered a stroke and never did did make it past this location and I know it's touchy all these years later but I just just wanted to show you it for documentation purposes and to kind of help keep Ramblin' Rob's memory alive. So like I said, for many years, this was the Volunteers of America. Um, and Rod would come through many of places during his time in, in Portland, um, in the surrounding areas, and, and just give back his time, you know, to the kids and, and to the folks that loved and appreciated him. And, you know, finding places like this that would, you know, help other folks. He used his, you know, his name and his imagery and, you know, basically his persona to still, even after the show, years later, just continue to, you know, just give Portland his love and his, and love back. People of Portland definitely loved him. He was definitely a tremendously loved guy all around town. I think most of Portland grew up being either on the show or watching him, you know, every day. So, unfortunately, this was it. And many years have passed, but his memory still is with us here in Portland. Pretty cool. See you tomorrow morning, 7.30 on the Rampin' Rod Show. So long, everybody!